finishing up some coffee and we're about to go do our daily farm chores here on the farm. And you know, people see us do the chores and they just see maybe just a snippet of it because I edited a lot of it out. But I think today I'm gonna sh we're gonna show them an in-depth detail of the farm chores and well, everybody has different jobs. That's right. And people don't realize they. Some people think that Mary Carl just sits in the house and yeah. doesn't help. So you'll get to see what everybody's different jobs are. I got to start out by feeding the little Rhode Island Red pullets, and they're not so little anymore. They are not so little anymore. They are still in the garage, but we had to add some expanders onto the brooder mm -hmm. to make it taller. So you'll get to see how much they've grown first. Hey, Foxy. Let's go check out these Rhode Island Reds. These little baby pullets. We got this extension, that's right here, that makes the brooder taller. And uh, now they wasn't hitting her head yet. Well, it needed to be done before, sooner than later. Sooner than later. But Jason tried to put it on by himself. Yeah, that was not, that was a disaster. And next thing I know is, I need your help. <laughs> and I said, why? And he said, all of them got loose. They did. I wasn't expecting them to jump completely out of the brooder like that, but they did. They all did. of them. And you do this here every day. Every morning, first thing, before it, I go feed anybody is I take care of these. And they can see how much litter there is there. Every, I mean, that's literally 24 hours. That is crazy. And I've been dumping that in the compost pile. So. We're gonna have some good compost. You think? At some point, you know. Oh. Compost, you know, is something that you gotta be patient with. You just gotta let it marinate. I've been just folding it. Uh-huh. And most of the time, it hangs in there. Right. But I have my tape here just in case just it doesn't Just in work. case. But that looks like it's gonna fold well. That does. So I don't know why I always change the pad before I fill the waters up. <laughs> it's it's probably not the best thing to do. You're probably right. You're probably right. And I like that little viewing area in that extender. I do too. When I open it up, yeah, they tend to think that I'm gonna get them for some reason. Look how big they are, y'all. I mean, them things is big now. They are big girls. And I'm saying girls because that's what we want all y'all to be, girls. I mean, they kind of all look alike. But you can see they don't drink all, all of their water. Yeah. I mean, it's always some left. But if I left this here for them, yeah. they'd be drinking that nastiness. That's right. And so no matter how full it is, I change it and clean it. Gotta have those clean waters. That's right. That's part of being a healthy bird That's is right. clean water. So. Gotta have those clean waters. And I have learned to set one of them up here, uh -huh. hold one in my hand, open the door, and then grab the oh, other look one. Look at you. Look at you. So here we are at our handy dandy sink washing station. Turn on the hot water. And yes, I could use a brush. We got one. But my hands seem to do the job for this little one. That's right. Better than a brush. But I do this every morning, no matter what residues looks like, they've got to have clean water. Get my hand down in there and scrub it around. And then I'm gonna turn it to cold. Get my apple cider vinegar. I do it for the chicks just because they're young and It'll help their immune system, and it'll help these waters from becoming slimy, which will happen in 24 hours. But it's not apple cider flavored. It's original with the mother apple cider vinegar. That's right, because they're imposters. Well, the flavoring wouldn't do anything. Well, there's some that say apple cider vinegar, but when you get to reading the label, it's just got flavoring in it. That's, that's right. right. It's just vinegar with apple flavoring in it. And that's no benefit. No. Well, I do turn them over out here because if any water drips, it'll keep from dripping inside. Hey, girls. Got some fresh water. And 
And there's your other one. And that's typical for chicks. They, they're a little on the crazy They're side. just flighty and, yeah. you know, they'll be tamed down once we get them. That's right. To where we can actually handle them and work with them. It's kind of hard to get down in here. And As they get older, yeah, they'll, they'll calm down. All right. They seem to tend to like that side better than this side, don't they? Well, it kind of just depends. Oh, really? Some mornings I come out here and that side will be empty. Interesting. So I don't think they prefer one over the other. I think it's just where they land. I got you. And where one of them eats, they tend to all eat. Kind of like when they lay in an uh, egg in a nest. That's right. They all <laughs> want to be in the same spot. They but you can see they're the coming out here nest. eating. Well, some of them were eating. So they saw me poke the camera down yeah, there. Yeah, they said, don't video me. Camera shy. All right, little girls. Y'all have a wonderful day. Now, last night, uh -huh. Roomba was nowhere to be found and her baby slept in that porta hut. I bet she slept in that coop. I think she's just trying to distance herself from them. She may be, because look how big they got. I mean, they already. they can be on their own, that's for sure. They are big chickens. Big chickens. I see old Peachy out here first thing. Mildred! What's up, Mildred? Hey, baby. Hey, girl. Oh, goodness. Peaches, where's your bow? It's over here. Oh, Peachy. So my job is also taking care of the goats, taking care of Peaches and the water in here as well as filling up the water on the end down there that Nugget uses. There's a man in black in there this morning. What's two up, of buddy? them. Oh, they're both in there. You're not gonna see one without the other too yeah. regularly. Oh, man in black. All right. You know why Roomba came over here? Roomba loves Peach's food. She sure does. I should have said Peach's food gets prepared first, That's not necessarily right. that she eats first. Because if I didn't do peaches, give yeah. her hers last, the goats would try to eat it. Is Paris over by Mildred? Yeah, oh yeah, Paris is right, right beside Mildred. And that's the routine. She knows that uh, Mildred, no. Mildred's going. Mildred's a big girl and she's right. going to protect her. That's right. All right, so you can see. Peach's food. Well, it's starting to swell up a little bit. Yeah. And soften and. That's right. You know it's and, and, easier to digest at this point. And Peaches gets a set amount of food every day and it's always soaked on, in water and a little bit of mineral oil added for her digestive system per the vet school in Auburn. And she's bubbling this morning. Peachy. Look at her, she's bubbling. Hey girl, she's ready, ain't she? She is, there you go, big mama. And look at Roomba. Roomba's brave because Peaches could just and that'd be it, you know, in the Roomba. And one of Roomba's children, Roomba ran her own child off. Did you see her? Yeah. Roomba said, y'all big enough now to be on your own. I've done, brought you guys up to this point. Rhonda, what are you doing in there? Huh? Say Rhonda. Could be what? Ruby. Now the Ruby's the uh, more red one. Rhonda looked like she'd been out in the sun a little too long and got faded. Or, or been in, you know, have had her feathers washed in the washing machine several times. I'm thinking that Peaches and Roomba must have a mutual understanding that, you know, in some way, Roomba must help Peaches out. Something. Uh, Roomba's, <laughs> Roomba said it ain't an easy task. I know, girl. Come here, baby. Come here, girl. <laughs> and the funny thing about one of the red turkeys is they never, ever 
show any kind of following to us or anything. But when Mary Carl comes out, yeah, they want to run after, her. and it's not an aggressive thing. It's just they run after Mary Carl. Ain't that something? <laughs> Felix, hey buddy, getting the water as clean in here, and then I got waters in here I take care of. Hey, Skipper Tipper. Hey, baby. Men in black and his crew. I hear you, Felix. Y'all can see this water is doing well, but I, usually once a week when they stay clean like this, I still empty it out and uh, clean it out. Oh, Rhonda. And if we didn't all do our separate jobs, you can see how much longer it would take. Yeah. If you had to stand over here with me. Yeah. <laughs> and then I had to stand with you. It would take a while, wouldn't it? Or if one person did everything, we'd never get it finished. It, it takes a while. It really does. Hey, Nuggy. Hey, Nuggy. An alarm system. And this is, this is a job that either of us do. Yeah. Feeding Nugget and the geese. It is. And I got Nugget some, uh, some uh, treats in the, uh, in the kitchen out left. I'm fixing to go grab those okay, real quick. Okay, you go do that. So we got him some grape tomatoes and some grapes. His purple grapes, which you guys know are his absolute favorite. And so I'm gonna give him these this morning. Nugget said, do you need me? Hey, buddy, look here. Look, right here. No, I want to get them out of the cup, ma'am. Right out of the cup. That's what I want. What is that in there? Tomatoes and grapes, and he's eating them like candy. That's all of them. Look here. No, he said, put them back in that cup. Put them back in the cup. He loves them. I would not have thought he would have liked cherry tomatoes. He loves them. I'm gonna start adding blueberries to it. Um, the only thing that it. he has ever showed interest in is red grapes. I'm so thankful that Lester did that video on the the red tight expert or the ostrich expert coming to see his ostrich Tina who had a bum leg, and um, and Lester was feeding an awesome feed. He really was. It wasn't like just it was, it looked like our 11 way scratch. We feed our chickens with mealworms. <laughs> he squeezes them. Yeah, look. Bleh. Oh, glass, buddy. He but, said when you actually get the flavor of it, it's not too good. Yeah. Well, at first he eats them all up and then, well, see, he ate, that was, a, that was a solo cup full and he ate almost every one of them but two. I'm sorry, I interrupted you about the It's rat okay. Type. But uh, he, I got to do they, my water. I'm gonna go over there with you. But he told the uh, the expert or the vet, uh huh, told Lester to stop with the grain and do more fruits and vegetables. And that's what I decided to do was add that to Nuggets' diet as well. And old boy loves them. I'm not gonna lie. Nugget said he does not have anything to do with the nastiness of the pools. No, not really. I'm so glad that you like those fruits and veggies. We've always given you grapes as a treat, but I'm like, Mama, I never would have thought you'd have liked cherry tomatoes. Yeah, but you do. We're going to get you some blueberries. Um, what else can we get you? Cranberries. You know, um... Our friends, Dave and Julie, that used yeah. to have a couple of emus. Oh, that's right. They had blueberries. Well, no, that's not what I was going to mention. Oh. I was going to mention the fact that he brought them a bag of lettuce home every day. And they liked it? And they loved it. They were just about knocking down for the lettuce. Oh, wow. But we did that with Nugget when he was little and he had no interest. Huh. Maybe things have changed. He said he's just going to lay out and clean the boots a little bit. 
Oh, the alarm system. I tell you, those Sebastopol geese are some of the most beautiful geese you'll ever see. And ours are, you can see they got the curly feathers. And ours are the smooth chested. Uh, if they had the curly, the curly feathers on their chest, they're even more beautiful. Like they wear a prom dress 24 seven right there. Yep. There's old Sim Sim right there. Y'all see the cream color goose there? Or the buff? That's the color he's called. Matter of fact, he's called a buff goose. So I just counted. Yeah. And you may or may not want to know. How many geese we got? Yeah. How many? How many you think? Well, don't count. 20? We have 16. 16 geese. And that includes Greg and Cantaloupe. Oh, Greg and Cantaloupe. That are over in the other area. Mm. Oh, so me, if oh you my. thought 20, does that mean I can get four more? Yeah, get four more. <laughs> oh, Topper got him a good spot, don't he? <laughs> Is that comfortable, Top? Huh? Is that comfortable, buddy? It looks comfy. Can I lay over there with you? You mind? I don't know if I can stand the smell though. Topper don't smell as bad as Joe, but they still boy goats. Yeah. Nugget actually doesn't eat that much. Um, when I raise his bucket up, it stays fairly full. I put it down here because the geese are getting it. That's not tomatoes or grapes is it buddy <laughs> i don't know that man he said where are me? they i'm gonna go fill the goose feeder up real quick <laughs> you even spit it out all right got that filled up for them Boys, boys, and boys. Topper said he's not, well he did. He come on out. What's up fellas? What is up fellas? Come here Moody. Moody giving you some loving? Yes. Let's cut this electric fence off. He said he chooses loving over food. <laughs> See their water there. We're gonna get it cranked up. All right, filling it up now. All right, let's see here. Get a book bucket here. Moody is choosing loving over food. Look at that. Who would have thought that? He said his middle name is Moody McLovin. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He might be gonna leave me. You think? Moody gets a, a cattle feed, and we've been putting that uh, Redmond mineral salt with the garlic on his feed. Because they need minerals and salt, and this has the garlic, which is supposed to help with flies. And then, of course, I gotta get the boy goat's feed here. Well, I want to show you something before you feed. Okay. <clears throat> Moody waiting patiently over there. I do the same thing with the boys. I put a little bit of that mineral on their feed as well. 
Yeah. Watching the water. Guys, y'all missed it. I put y'all some. I put y'all some feed over there, and y'all need to go check it out. I don't know that Moody would be as kind as Peaches and Cher. Uh, no. No, not at all. <laughs> Moody's not a Cher. But I think that they realize that. Moody is not a Cher. What you want to show me? Oh, look at this on this side. Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Mary Cross showed it to me yesterday and said it looks like Nugget. Uh, it does look like Nugget. Moody, you got a white... He said, don't look at it. <laughs> you got a white spot of Nugget on your side. <laughs> Look at there. Look at Nugget. Look at Nugget. You if just you want to feed him, we might can get yeah. a good look at it. Let's see here. All right, buddy. I'm going to get you here, right here. Right there. You go. Right there. There's Nugget right there. Oh, wait. Who knew that? Who huh? knew he was carrying Nugget around? Had no he got a tattoo of Nugget on him. Yeah. Joe said he just wish he had a tattoo of Nugget Don't on him. Don't you, Joe? That's your boy. Yeah, Nugget's your boy. He's looking for Nugget now. Look at him. He's looking for Nugget now. Nugget's back in the back of the pasture walking around. He's way back uh -oh, there, Joe. Uh-oh, Joe sees him. Joe sees him, look. Hey, Nugget. Come here, buddy. Come here, Nugget. <laughs> There you go, toppy top. Joe doesn't know what to do. Do I eat or do I look at and, Nugget? And, and it's a mess because he, he gets squirrely in the brain. Joe, eat up, buddy. And Man. Topper does nothing wrong. Topper don't do anything. Topper's just the, the best goat and he is absolutely handsome now. He is a beautiful he man. He is a beautiful No offense, goat. Joe, but all that yellow that's turned Ugh. into brown is not very attractive. Not as pretty as old Top there. Top is a handsome fella. And Topper was a bottle fed baby, so he is sweet as he can be. He is, he's very sweet and tame. But yeah. it's hard for us to give him a lot of loving because if you got anything planned in the next two weeks, <laughs> you're gonna carry that smell with you, <laughs> right? That's right. Hello, Tina Turner. There's Imogene, Pearl. Here comes, that's April, ain't it? Pumpkin, Astrid. I see Corny, Goat. Here they all come. Bobby, Cheryl. Hello, my feather friends. Hello. Hey, Bobby. Hey, Tommy. Ursula. There comes Bandit, Phyllis Diller. Here comes the Peacock Clan. Y'all can hardly tell the babies from the mama now. Look at that. Ain't that something? Everybody loves their morning snack. Yeah. Come on, you crazy turkey. I can't figure out how to get in every day. Y'all can see this delicious, hearty snack we give them right here. Hey, little ducks. Hey, Scott. Y'all come on, get some. I saw Greg, there he is. Come on, Greg. Come get you some, Greg. Hey, Timmy. Timmy and his family. Scott's got one feather coming in, y'all. Look at that. Ain't that something? Oh, Scott. I think he's got several coming in, but I see that one sitting on top with the eye in it. Scott is beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful, Scott. All right, let's go give Timmy and him some this morning. Yeah, I hear you, Timmy. I hear you, Timmy. 
How you guys doing, hmm? Check y'all's water here. Oh, your water's full. Yeah, your water looks good, Timmy. Let's see what y'all's feeder looks like. See in here. Oh, you might need a little feed. Let me get you some feed, buddy. All right, I'm gonna fill up Timmy and him feed. Mama is gathering waters. She's gonna clean those waters out. We got waters all in this chicken area. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed it or not, but and I'll show them all to you. How many waters we actually got in here? And we keep them all so clean that it takes a lot of time. All right, Timmy. Now we feed Timmy and them a crumble because if y'all follow us, you know. And if you don't, these guys are the world's smallest chicken breed officially. There's some breeds out there now that have come on the scene that are supposed to be smaller than a Sarama. So that's why we keep them in here and that's why we give them this crumble because they're just so small. And uh, if we were to let these guys out, there's a good chance that they would get picked on pretty, pretty bad and maybe too bad, if you know what I mean. So we keep these guys in here. Uh, matter of fact, our dear friends at Head Family Farm are gonna get a couple of our Saramas, yeah. All right, so we're at Mary Carl's Pigeon Loft and she's got pigeon chores that uh, she does daily. These are the rollers. Oh, these are your rollers? Are you fixing to let these out? Yeah, okay. I let the rollers out every day because they're, they're, they're real fast. Oh, okay. <laughs> I let them out. Uh huh. These three. There's three of them. There's uh huh. The other one. They're the youngest ones, and they don't go far. They just hang out here. Yep. All right. I'm gonna let the rollers out. I'm ready. See, they just go right up there. <laughs> yeah, they didn't go far at all, did they? Baby. You see the oh. baby? Oh, he's got a baby. He's taking care of the baby? Yeah, and they'll let him out, and his wife takes care of the baby while. This thing about pigeons is they split up the duties, don't they? Yes. <laughs> the males care for the babies just as much as the females do. They do, and actually the males take more care of the babies. Ain't that something? Kind of like an emu. Yeah. You know, in the emu world, the males do just about everything but lay the egg. <laughs> All rollers. <laughs> Look at that. And then the young ones oh. just sit right there and, and watch. And there goes the two you just let go. Yep. Ain't that something? They all join together at one point. There they are. Wow. <laughs> and they always come back. They do. Every day they come back. I fill up their feed. And this is a special pigeon feed, right? This is, is specifically for pork. Of course our chickens can eat it. I mean, yeah. it can, any of our birds can eat it, but it's... Pigeon feed. And give the chickens the leftovers. Yeah, you clean it out and give the chickens the leftovers there and they love the seeds. <laughs> yeah. That's a pretty chicken right there, ain't it? That little smaller one mm -hmm. or the silky? And the silky I know is beautiful. That new, she's kind of new, ain't she? She's a mix. Yeah. We hatched her. And the turkey's gotta come. Is that? It's Ursula. Yeah, oh Ursula. What's that one, Hershey? Twix. Twix. Hey, Ozella. Hey girl. It's funny how long she stays with those babies. I know it. The peacocks, the mo uh, babies stay with the mama for a long time. And it's hard to tell if they're male or female. Yep. They look like females right now, but that don't mean a thing with peacocks <laughs> or peafowl. Something about like that, uh -huh. and they'll eat on that okay. when they get back. Gotcha. Are right, we going into the aviary. I probably had to get some more food for them. And this is where the beautiful Victorian crown pigeons stay at, right over there. Got some grit in there. Oh, you and got some grit in there? I put oh, their, most of their feed in this feeder. Uh huh. But they prefer to eat it, I throw it out and they prefer to look for it. Really? Mm -hmm. Like to forage for it? Yep. Interesting. So I'll go get some more. Let me grab the water. 
Yeah. We'll fill up their bath too. Okay. She got some more pigeon feed. Look, these figs are almost ready. Are they almost ready? Yeah. They soft? Uh -huh. Wow, I don't know what, a, this is a Papa John fig, and I don't know what color the fig was supposed to be, but I guess it's a green fig. <laughs> Let's pull one off and just see. I bet it's a, uh, a white center. You can give it to the Victorians, they love them. No, it's gonna be red, it just ain't ready yet. They actually prefer them when they're not quite ripe. I got you. Look. He's going to it, ain't he? Or she. Look at her eating it. Oh yeah. <laughs> she got a little bit of the center out. That's good stuff, ain't it, girl? Look at him eating that fig. Tearing that fig up. <laughs> and I, I've read that birds actually like them before they're completely ripe. Is that right? Mm-hmm. And then the little pigeons, they don't, they don't care about fruit. They just want their seeds. <laughs> and foraging is good for them. It is. Mm-hmm. Look at the powders. Mm-hmm. I think I've got like, I've only got like seven powders. Today was actually the day I got the first pigeons. Oh, a really? A year ago, uh-huh. <laughs> you gonna let them bathe in them? Yeah. The Victorians don't like to bathe. They like the rain. They like the rain. Mm-hmm. I got you. So I always put some apple cider vinegar mm -hmm. in their bath. It helps make their feathers look pretty. It's also good for them. I just put about that much. And then we'll fill it up and they'll come take a bath. Oh, good. Got the water is done. And so your pigeons are fed in water. All right. And we just randomly put these waters throughout the area, uh, mainly for the little ones. The smaller chickens. I'm gonna show you all our other waterers too, because we got a lot of waters. Because certain chickens like to hang out in certain areas. Uh, this Brooke always says this is Scott's water here on the side of the aviary, and because Scott likes to drink out of it, so they all have their own little areas, and we just make sure everybody's got plenty of water around here. Nice clean water. That's right. One usually goes here. Right here, this is one that the ducks were nasty up for us, but they gotta have clean water too. You can see them already drinking out of it. I see there's Phyllis, Dilla, and Tina Turner right over there by it. And with these waters, about every third time or second time, I will uh, add apple cider vinegar to them. Hey, cantaloupe. Oh, cantaloupe, he's an old man. Do we know how old cantaloupe is? I would say he's probably 10. 10, but he's beautiful. He is beautiful. And he's a sweetheart. He is. All right, I'm gonna check the main chicken feeder here. This is our 50 pound feeder that contains their main chicken feed here, which is a layer crumble, which everybody can have. That's a layer pellet. Or a layer pellet, sorry, it's not a crumble. I know you see me throw the scratch out in the mornings, but that's just a treat. That's not their main diet. This is their main diet besides whatever they find foraging around the farm, which is whatever, grass, weeds, bugs, 
amphibians. <laughs> They'll eat anything. That's, They'll eat anything. Chickens are savages. <laughs> now, we wanted to give everybody a nice update on the sand. We wanted to make sure it was working. We didn't want to do like a, a two-day thing. So, oh, this is great or oh, this is not great. But we've been doing it for over a week now. And I must say, the sand in the bottom of the coop for the past few weeks has been the ticket. It's been awesome. All I have to do is just literally come in here and I did get a scoop that has a long handle on it. Uh -huh. And the long handle is the ticket when it comes to that because I can literally just reach my scoop under here, get me a whole thing of it, and you can see it just sifts right through. It does. And I put it in a bucket and then take it to the compost pile. So it's not going to waste. Even though it's waste, it's not going to waste. Nope. Feathers can be composted as well, so that's not a problem with the feather being in there. So I feel like all in all, it was an excellent idea. Um, you're not going to just let it sit here and accumulate. No, you if do you, it, is it every day you about do it? or Well, just, just about? whenever, you know, I come in and I, I see that it's accumulated a uh -huh. little bit, I will do it because if, if you wait and let it pile up, yeah, it's going to be a job. Right. You're going to feel like you're actually cleaning out the coop. So two thumbs up for the sand in the coop. Two thumbs up for the sand in the coop. So this is the little call duck area. And the call ducks are, of course, the small, small, small. The smallest duck. The smallest domesticated duck breed. And um, their feeders are full. They don't eat very much, so we just check their feed daily. Uh, you've already cleaned their pools out, and you can see their pools right there. And we're eventually going to build these guys an area. Who's in here? Jeannie? <laughs> Jeannie, Forrest, Mochi, and Mallow. Jeannie, okay. And then we had a mallard that had an injured leg. Yeah. So Mary Carl and I caught her and put her in here to recover. Okay. Well, she recovered and we put her out. Yep. And guess what? She come right back in. She liked it so much in here, she made her way back. Oh my gracious. And I'm not gonna lie. Especially the white ones, you can really see it on them. They're just the cutest things ever. I mean, they look like little stuffed animals. You don't look real, Mallow. Is Mallow the girl? Honestly, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know. <laughs> All I know is one of them's Mochi and one of them's Mallow. Well, oh, they're the cutest things ever. I mean, just cute as a button. And these four get yeah. along so well. They do get along well. Ain't that something? Hey guys, did Greg give y'all permission to get in his pool? Huh? That's Greg's buddy anyways, ain't it? That's Ollie, ain't it? No, Ollie's a boy. I thought that was a boy right there. He doesn't have a curl on his tail. The one in the pool does, don't he? Ain't that a curl? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's Ollie. <laughs> hey, Ollie. All right, I just asked you about gathering eggs, and then you told me. Well, we have a bunch of freeloading chickens. <laughs> that's just the bottom line. <laughs> But they got a good excuse because most of them are older and when they start getting some age on them, they start slowing down. Yes. Our chickens are not laying. That back in the spring, we were getting a few eggs, right? but nothing of any kind of numbers like what we used to get at the old farm. So I just went and checked because I do check yeah. every day. Every day. That is one reason we have started the Rhode Island Red Pullets. That's right. And we are growing them out so they'll be ready to lay in spring so we can, in turn, have food for our family once again. Right. Now, after all the animals have been taken care of, and as you guys can see, we take really great care of the animals. Uh, everything is clean, everybody's healthy. 
Uh, Y'all have seen our other videos where we treat our animals for any type of thing that needs to be treated for. But the next thing is, after all that's done, is the garden area in the greenhouse. Now over here are our seed starts. Of course, you guys know we planted everything except the onions, but the onions are ready. Uh, they're ready to roll. So we're gonna be planting onions and garlic this week and my leeks. That's going in this week. Uh, we got some more plants over here and then my cuttings over there. I'm gonna water all those guys here. And then also I got my plants out here Then, like I said before, I like to stay proactive with my weeds. So I'm going to run my horse plow through my garden rows here and keep these weeds at bay on the garden. Always stay proactive with your weeds if you can. And you can see the garden is looking awesome, y'all. Look at this. Isn't it looking great? Look how big things have already gotten. I mean, look at that. Y'all saw us plant it, look at that. Look how big it is. Starting to take off. Uh, now I know weed in this garden is, uh, is some work, but it is so therapeutic for me. Uh, grabbing that horse plow, going up and down these rows, it's just so relaxing. Uh, most of the time I put my ear pods in. It's just a great way for me to relax and I'm getting some awesome exercise, believe it or not. Uh, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight rows right now that I go through. And I have to do it three times because they're three foot rows. I really enjoy it, I do. I really enjoy it. And I feel like it's making me a healthier person out here doing it, I just do. To show you guys that I'm not kidding, it is actually 11.20 right now. We got started this morning with everything after we drank our coffee and ate breakfast. We got started roughly around, we were a little later this morning because I was planning this video. So we got started around 8.30ish. So not quite three hours, but close to it. Now it doesn't take us that long when we do it our separate chores you know when we're doing because we're doing them all at the same time so it doesn't take us that long so it's probably half that so it probably takes us about an hour and a half to get it all done but that gives you guys a perspective of what it is that we do every single day or every morning here on the farm now in the evening we'll come back we'll top all the waters back off and We'll feed the goats, the cows, one more time. And I give the chickens another round of scratch, just a little evening snack. So that happens again in the evening times. That's every day. <laughs> but these are our babies. These are our babies. We love them to death. We want them to be happy. We want them to be healthy. We want them to have the best life they could possibly have or the best life we could possibly give them and so that's why we that's why we invest so much time and energy into doing what we're doing plus it makes us happy it really does that kind of gives you an idea of what it's like here on our farm and most of these creators that do this in this niche um especially the guys that i know and care about uh it, it's it's worked keeping these animals fed and, and clean and watered and happy every day. It's a lot of work, but you gotta look.